Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online series 8 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. In the last episode, we used a really fun team featuring Weakness Policy, Mewtwo, Sucker Punch, Grim Snarl, Assault Vest, Entei, Life Orb, Gigalith, and a bunch of other things. And so we'll be playing a couple more games with it today. If you haven't seen the last episode, I highly recommend it, as Mewtwo did really shine in a couple of those matches yesterday. But once again, this team was built by 2017 World Champion Ryota Otsubo. If you're not following him, you definitely should, because he has just been one of the most prolific team builders. He's always coming up with really, really fun things, and he's World Champion for a reason. So huge thank you to Ryota once again for the team and let's get started with today's episode Mewtwo was really fun to use uh yesterday I had a blast with it and I was honestly pretty impressed by it as well I think like uh, generally it just does more damage than I would normally expect I think the weakness policy is obviously a very big component to that but uh you know synergizes quite nicely with the Tapu Lele on this team as well so yeah uh, let's get into today's episode. I actually faced this opponent the other day, and they totally kicked my butt. They have a really cool team in Alchemy and Evoltal, and if I remember correctly, uh, the Evoltal had like max steel spike, and Alchemy could decorate. So, Evoltal is definitely a pretty tough matchup for Mewtwo. Uh, in fact, we have no type coverage into it, so Mewtwo is really bad here, actually. Um, that's okay. To be honest, Gigalith might be our offensive option to go with here. Um, I guess I have a Leckie. I still want to bring you two, but the question is, like, how do I actually fit it in? Because I'm thinking we can go, like, Aleki and Entei here. This thing is Snarl, as well as Max, you know, steals, uh, Max Rockfall. So I'm thinking Aleki, Entei, Gigalith, and then Mewtwo. But Evil Tall is honestly really strong here, I think. So I think the, the main downside for Mewtwo is that it has really poor matchups into some restricted Pokemon, like Calyrex, Shadow Rider, and Evil Tall, for example. Uh, so that's why it's definitely not like one of the more standard restricted Pokemon, uh, just because sometimes it just feels significantly weaker. But I think there's still an argument to be made for it in the late game, because Expanding Force, uh, or just even, you know, Flamethrower can do a lot into things like Venusaur, for example. Uh, so Mewtwo still has pretty good type coverage going into the end game, but... I was playing a practice game, not with this team, but with one of the previous teams, and I ran into this opponent, uh, and their Alchemy plus Evil Tall combination was super, super cool. So, yeah, I'm uh, glad I get to go up against them for Road to Rank this time around. Either way, thanks as always for watching Road to Rank. If you enjoyed, please share your support by leaving a like. And question of the day, I originally was going to ask what your favorite Pokemon movie was, because, you know, we're using Mewtwo and there was a Mewtwo Pokemon movie, but then I was like, I don't know how many people have watched all the Pokemon movies, so I was like, why don't I just ask what your all-time favorite movie is? Uh, so let me know your comments, uh, or your answers to that in the comment section below. I am a big Christopher Nolan fan, so a lot of my favorite films uh, are definitely his, and I think like the the second Batman film that he made is one of probably my all time favorite film. Um, but there's so many good movies. <sighs> okay, it's Incineroar plus Evil Tall, so Fake Out into a Lucky seems likely. Mm. What do I do here? This is such a weird spot to be in. Because I'm, like, nervous about them max airstreaming. I, I think they're evil tall maxes, right? So, like, this might seem kind of weird, but I don't want them to airstream. So, I'm going to max strike to bring evil tall speed. Well, actually, Aleki probably still outspeeds them at plus one speed anyway, right? Okay, never mind. I'm going to protect Dynamax and uh, Rockfall. I don't think Sash is that important for us in this matchup anyway. Because I don't think you're one-shotting the evil tall. Ooh, nice switch. Okay. Into Mammal Swine. I don't mind that too much, because I can flare you next turn. Um, but this means I think Incineroar is going for a parting shot here for sure. Because with this play, basically, you're expecting the electric type attack into the Evil Tall. But you can see how I couldn't bring Mewtwo into this matchup, right? And not at least as a lead, because if I lead Mewtwo against Evil Tall and Instant, I just get crushed completely. And we're at such a disadvantage. So one thing that's important in Pokemon is at least identifying when, like, maybe something that normally would like be a primary carry uh shouldn't actually be your number one option yeah so they didn't go for a fake out on in, uh, the the the, the uh instant which was a really good play rockfall still does a ton of damage so i'll take that and of course we can just flare into mamu next turn but i think it's probably a party shot coming out here oh they actually just flare blitz okay you know what i don't mind that i don't mind that too much um and I can see why, because their goal is to just eliminate Aleki, right? Because Aleki is a huge pain for the evil tall in the back. So obviously I'm worried about Earthquake here, but I could also see Mamoswine just protecting. 
I could T-Bolt into Incineroar and go for a Max Rockfall. Okay, let's say I go for that, and then you KO a Lucky. I still have Mewtwo and Gigalith in the back, and Gigalith's a decent switch in. I don't know, would you protect Mamoswine here? I I'm honestly expecting it to, so I'm going to T-Bolt the Incin and Rockfall into it. If Mammal doesn't protect, it's still not the end of the world, and if it protects, we're in really good shape. But they don't protect. Okay, nicely played. Nicely played. I think my opponents played these first two turns really well, um, given that I think we had a slight lead advantage. So I had the opportunity to knock out Mamoswine there, uh, and I think if they protect, we can really capitalize off it, but they did a great job realizing, hey, I shouldn't protect here because if I protect and I don't get targeted on, I lose so much. So it is going to be high horsepower into a lucky. Yep. That's enough for a KO. I mean, late game Evil Tall is looking pretty scary right now. Definitely looking pretty scary. I can bring in Mewtwo. I think we bring out Mewtwo first. Um, I mean, Evil Tall is going to come out from their end. And then what do we do is the question. I have Snarl, Gigalith in the late game is pretty good. What is their last one? Torkoal? Venusaur? Let's say I flared there. If I flared there, I KO'd the Mamoswine. Then, but they might have just flare blitzed into a Lucky, right? I wouldn't be surprised if they flare blitzed and quaked into a Lucky. Yeah, so Evil Tail comes back out. Um, I mean, the easiest play to make here really is to just go for Flamethrower onto Mamoswine. I honestly, I think I want to max strike Evil Tall here because I can see Evil Tall max air streaming in this position. And we have max strike, so why not go for it, right? Um, You could sucker punch here, but that'd be kind of surprising because then you just take so much damage from an attack from Entei. But I think my opponent did a good job stalling out my Dynamax. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to put on the pressure early and they did a very good job basically not losing too much in those couple of turns. So yeah, well played. Maybe Lele could have been interesting as a even as a max option now that I think about it. Like maxing Lele sounds kind of fun. Especially against Evil Tall. Because we also have the Psychic Seed. So maybe the Lele over a Leki could have been a better bring. Lele lead even could have been interesting. The thing is, like I mentioned, I ran into this team a couple days ago and I, I know they have max steel spike on Evil Tall, so it's not necessarily an amazing answer, but. Okay, they don't protect with the Mammal, so we get Flamethrower off. Is that enough for a KO actually? It is. Okay, good. Um, I definitely thought that was an opportunity for Mamoswine to protect, so I'm pretty happy they didn't go for protect there. Uh, I just want to strike here to guarantee that I at least outspeed the Evil Tall this next turn. That's so little damage, though. I don't know. Is Rockfall worth it there? It may be. Let's see if they Darkness. Okay, they did just end up going for Darkness anyway, so... Oh, into Entei. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, predicting a Protect on Mewtwo in that position, I'm guessing, which makes a lot of sense. But... That does give us some room to work with now. Because we've already sold out one turn of their Dynamax. Mm, my Entei's Max ends, and then the Gigalith in the back doesn't have Dynamax, so I guess that's kind of awkward. So let's see what comes out. Uh, it's Alchemy. Okay. The thing about Alchemy is I don't think you're going to carry Protect, but my opponent can snowball this game very quickly with Decorate onto the Evil Tall. I, mean, I think I have to just expanding force and sacred fire here into alchemy. I don't even know if that KOs. I wouldn't think it does, but we do have the Gigalith in the back. I, I guess I could sacred. Oh, what a good protect. Oh, I honestly wasn't expecting that to have protect, and that was kind of a bad assumption on my end. That might have just won them the game. I, I made that play because I was like, how often does alchemy actually carry protect? Uh, they're going to go for another Darkness here onto the Mewtwo slot this time around. Okay. Uh, You know, we do have Life Orb Rock Slide, and Alchemy doesn't have any offense. So I wonder now if I actually just divert my attention onto Evil Tall instead. I don't know, even if I went for, like, Hurricane Sacred Fire there onto the Evil Tall, though, it's not like it guarantees us the win, right? Uh, I could Snarl Rock Slide here. Minus one speed. Gigalith's not outspeeding, though. 
Minus two special defense. Or I could Stone Edge Rock Slide. Just don't know how much Evil Tall does into Gigalith because, like I said, they, I think they have Max Steel Spike here. It's definitely Rock Slide here. I just don't know whether it's Snarl or Stone Edge. I think it's Snarl because then I can Extreme Speed. I need Gigalit to survive. That's the thing. And I, also, if I miss Stone Edge, I feel like I kind of just lose instantly. Unless, wait, is Evil Tall's um, Steel type attack a physical type attack? It might be. Is it like Steel Wing? That totally could be the case. Yeah, so they go for Decorate now. This is a really interesting duo. I've never seen anyone else run Alchemy plus Evil Tall. Oh, they go for Max Darkness, though. Okay. I think that's physical max darkness, because I think if it were special, we'd survive. So I wouldn't be surprised if that, if that were coming off foul play. Yeah. Yeah, this Alchemy is sick, and that was a really, really good protect the previous turn as well. I guess the question is whether or not Stone Edge, Hurricane, Stone Edge into Evil Tall would have KO'd. I don't think it would have. I guess we could still win off a of Sacred Fire crit right now. Or sorry, Stone Edge crit. Although they could just Sucker Punch now, right? Assuming you have Sucker Punch. Now that I think about it, they might just be purely physical evil Tall. I don't even know if they have any special attacks. I think Sucker Punch is coming out here, though. So, I think you can kind of see the downside. Oh, yeah, they also have Baby Doll Eyes, which is so sick. Uh, that being said, we're still looking for a crit here anyway. Okay, they don't have Sucker Punch. Stone Edge crit there actually would have won us the game, and we did have an increased crit chance. Okay, they did have Oblivion Wing. So, I'm curious if it's mixed evil Tall here. I think mixed would make a lot of sense. Um... You know, in the end, we have a slightly higher chance to crit there with the Stone Edge. Um, so, yeah. Uh, either way, though, my opponent played the Evil Tall really, really well. You can see that they basically did a great job switching it out and putting it in the perfect position. Um, I think the Alchemy is such an interesting partner for it. So, Baby Doll Eyes, Protect, Decorate is a really interesting moveset. And, you know, getting Evil Tall to plus two just makes it significantly stronger. I, I had to guess there were Assault Vests on that Evil Tall. Um, but either way, I think that's one of the most interesting duos I've run into. Let I barely, I, I haven't seen anyone else run that combination basically, uh, at all. So definitely kudos to my opponent, uh, for one coming up with that team, uh, but then also two great execution. So that is, like I mentioned, one of the downsides of just using Mewtwo in general. It didn't really do very much for us there. Oh, I guess it got the KO onto Mamoswine, but I can't help but wonder whether or not like Tapu Lele actually would have been a better bring. Okay. What do we got here? Calyrex Ice for this next one. How good's Mewtwo here? It's not bad. Actually, it's not bad at all. I like it a lot. Um, I think Gigalith is fantastic into this matchup, actually, so we're definitely bringing that. So I like Grimmsnarl, Mewtwo, Gigalith, and then probably just Lele? I like Psychic Terrain here, I think. And Lele has Dazzle. And Focus Blast, actually, for Porygon. So, I like that. Uh, I think thinking into that last match, I mean, let's say I knocked out the Mamoswine the turn I got high horse powered, but then, yeah, if you Flare Blitz into a Lucky, I still lose a Lucky there anyway, don't I? Especially because the sun is up. So that doesn't really work out. Maybe Max Rock falling into Evil Tall would have been better. Dynamaxing Gigalith is, like, tempting, but I had to KO Mamoswine. So, like, it could have been interesting to not Dynamax. Like, could you imagine... If I just went for Sacred Fire turn 1 onto the Evil Tall slot, is it switched out? Especially because I had Inner Focus, I guess. I did have the opportunity to just attack. Like, what What if I just went Electro Web, Sacred Fire onto the Evil Tall slot? That covers for a switch out. And then if I can knock on Mamoswine, then I just Dynamax Gigalith, and it feels like we're in pretty good shape. So that might have been the better approach, to be honest. Uh, okay, they're going to go with Entei... Not Entei, sorry. <laughs> um, the... What am I saying? The, the, the Incineroar. Um, I kind of want to swap out into Gigalith here, to be honest. If you're my opponent, what do you do? Fake out into Grimmsnarl? Which I don't really care about this turn. Mm. They could also just Parting Shot right now. But I think if you're my opponent, you might want to get Trick Room up, and this is where I can get Gigalith in for free, which would actually be really, really nice. Okay, so I can go Reflect. Switch on into Gigalith. 
Uh, Mewtwo really doesn't want to go up against Trick Room stuff, but I think that's one of the reasons why Life Orb Gigalith is on the team. Uh, and I think Mewtwo can still be really good in this late game, but we might not Dynamax and we'll Dynamax Gigalith if Trick Room goes up, which I think is pretty likely here. Oh! What's maxing here? I don't mean, Is it Porygon? I did not see that one coming. Oh gosh. Uh Well, good thing I switched. Oh my gosh. Uh I mean that that's my, that's my comment. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what? Okay. You know what? Maybe that's okay though. We didn't faint there. So and once again, it's not like Dynamax Porygon 2 is crazy. We've done a lot on Road to Rank. In fact, we even used the team like, like Dynamax Porygon 2 primarily. So it's not that shocking by any means, but still. It's definitely not what you expect. Hmm. Okay, well, glad that I didn't just lose Mewtwo, because that could have been really ugly. Um, there are switch into Rockside. Here's Gastrodon. I'm going to go for a light screen here. Actually, light screen or ref reflect? Reflect is more valuable. They have Calyrex in the ice in the back. No, light screen's fine here, I think. So I'm on light screen and just go for a rock slide in this position. Life of rock slide will do a fair amount. If Ensign Flare Blitzes, that's great. Uh, I probably just KO Ensign if you parting shop, no problem. Okay, so they are going to go for another Phantasm, which means you can just like Flare Blitz, flare blitz right now, or even Darkest Lariat. Uh, but that is really interesting. I guess the problem now is if you KO the Grimstar, I don't get that Sucker Punch off. Yeah, they are gonna Flare Blitz. Eh. Into Grim. Yeah, it's enough for a KO. I, I, I think the upside here is we should KO the Incineroar. You know what's really interesting? I bring out Mewtwo, and because I'm weakness policy, I intentionally let you Phantasm me, and I protect the Mewtwo just to let that Phantasm activate. I think that's the play. So I'll bring in Mewtwo, go for a regular Protect, hope you proc my weakness policy, bring in Tapu Lele. Uh, once you, if you KO Gigalith and then go from there. So let's go into Mewtwo right now. Shadow Ball, Dynamax Porygon 2. Very cool. I don't know, maybe I should have reflected. Let's see, they bring out Calyrex. I have Wide Guard. You're not going to set up Trick Room here if you're my opponent, right? I want to protect and go into Lele. If I'm my opponent, what am I doing? Phantasm into Mewtwo and then just go for... Okay, my only question, like, does uh, Max Flare here KO Calyrex? I don't think so. Oh, but I have Wide Guard, so I think here we can actually protect and Wide Guard in the hopes that they activate my Weakness Policy. Yeah, I actually really like that here. In the hopes they activate Weakness Policy and then go for the uh, Glacial Lance. And then Phantasm into Mewtwo. So this this seems really weird, right? But I don't think it actually makes sense in the context of this turn. Nice. Nice, okay. And then show me Phantasm into Mewtwo, and it is time to roll through. No, they striked! <laughs> For negligible damage, but... Uh, I wonder if they read into the policy there then. Or are they fast? Like, do you outspeed me now? Oh my gosh, they do. Speedy Calyrex. Okay. Mm. Well, I think here I'm just going to go for... Flare into Calyrex and switch Gigalith out into Lele. Does it make more sense to airstream here? No, I don't mind flaring. If flare just one shots, then I, I really feel silly for not just going for it last turn, but I didn't think you would, and I was worried about activating a policy on it. But now that we know Calyrex is faster, 
even if you are policy it's not the end of the world and i'm switching here because i already revealed wide guards so i feel like they're more prone to going for like a high horsepower in this position i'm just really if it, they it, it, like good job on them for not phantasming because if i did the game is just over here it feels like like me too just sweeps through but the downside is now that i can't activate its weakness policy so let's see uh, okay, we get Mewtwo out. It's funny because honestly, if I just stayed in with Mewtwo, eh, Phantasm still does a hefty amount. It's interesting too because the Porygon, you know, lowers your special defense. Okay, yeah, they just go for. Well, they actually went for Glacial Lance again. <laughs> interesting. Uh, we'll get Flare off. Wow, that was a one hit KO. I should have just flared. I didn't think that would one shot, to be honest. Uh, I mean, that's good for us, though. I'm not going to complain, but I could have just flared super powered last turn. Which would have been really, really nice. Okay, they just go for try attack. That's fine. I don't think I need Lele. Actually, we might even survive. I was going to say with the light screen and the psychic seed, but it did just enough, it looks like. Okay, I mean, Porygon's not really what I'm nervous about. So it's whether or not Mewtwo can deal with their last Pokemon. But the fact we got that knockout was definitely nice. Oh, it's Grimmsnarl. They don't have any offense at this point. I think we should win. Well, not necessarily, because I guess Mewtwo can't actually do much to their side. So, I mean, Grimmsnarl's Spirit Break here is scary. <laughs> can we out? If I airstream into this thing, can I outspeed? No way, I can't. Nope. Um. We want the special defense up. I mean, I think I'm going to airstream and heavy slam here into the Grimmsnarl. I can deal with Porygon with Expanding Forces in the late game. And we still have Light Screen up too. Interesting, I didn't think Grimstar would be their last option. I wish Gigalith was a little bit faster for us right now. That actually almost one-shot Grimstar. Was that a crit or is that really just that strong? Wow, it really was just that strong. That's impressive damage output from Mewtwo, I have to say. Ooh, they Spirit Break into Mewtwo, okay. That works for me, because I have Super Power on Gigalith. We should survive this, right? Yes. Nice. Okay. They just proc policy, and now we can Mindstorm and Superpower into Porygon. What a crazy game. Definitely wasn't expecting to Dynamax Porygon. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure if Max Flare would have one-shot Cal. Uh, Calyrex is just so bulky. Like, I, I never want to think that something's going to one-shot it. Um, but now we have policy up Mewtwo and Superpower on the uh, Gigalith. 28 down to 17, so we survive one more turn of Sand. So even if you're like Protect Porygon in some really obscure scenario, we should be good. Yeah, I think here we can just go for Mindstorm. I think that might just KO by itself, but we also have Superpower here. So the Wadgar was really clutch. Although I guess not really, because they didn't even end up Phantasming that turn. <laughs> uh, but we'll get the Mindstorm off. Nice, and that gets the KO onto Mewtwo. Or sorry, onto Porygon. That was a crit. May have mattered, but because we have Superpower with Life Orb on the Gigalith as well, I really don't think you can win the game at this point. Uh, you have to recover in that position. If you don't recover, then Mewtwo just KOs you next turn. But even if you recover, uh, I get a Life Orb Superpower and a Porygon with no defensive boost. So I think we're probably good there. Um, but yeah, that was definitely... I, I think today's games highlight how if you can stall out your opponent's early Dynamax and their early Dynamax doesn't do very much, it can often put you in a very big advantage, right? Because that's kind of what happened in both of these games. In the first game, my opponent did a really good job stalling out my Dynamax and just making good switches. Uh... I feel like in both of these games, you know, we tried to make like a big play uh, with Dynamax on turn one and it didn't work out. Uh, and as a result, having the later Dynamax really, really was a big advantage for my opponent in that first game and then myself in the second game. Wow, this is a team. Uh, really cool team. Zekrom, Lando IP2, Marowak, Milotic, and Amoongus. Okay, so the first thing I noticed is that they don't have a single Psychic Resist or Immune. So it feels like Mewtwo plus Lele is actually phenomenal here. But I have to worry about Trick Room. They obviously have Trick Room. So Giglet's absolutely coming out here for us. Mm, Lando Eye is a little bit scary. I don't want to set up the sand for that. I don't even think plus two Mewtwo KOs. Um, Into Porygon. Like, that's the main concern, right? I haven't really gone to Lecky Mewtwo to go for the like the assurance, but I think that typically works against faster teams, and my opponent's team is relatively slow here. So I'm kind of down to just go Mewtwo Lele, see how that goes. Gigalith in the back, and then... 
I, I feel like Gigalith under Trick Room can actually be really good here, so I can bring the Grimmsnarl to set up screens to support Gigalith. Alternatively, it's just Entei for, you know, general bulk and Sacred Fire, but... You know, I'm willing to give Grimmsnarl a try here in the back. And it, like, doesn't feel amazing conventionally, but I think it could make some sense here. So, I, I think the Life Orb Gigalith here is actually a really, really critical component to the team, because it does offer you, one, a lot of offense. You know, we actually just used Tyranitar on that Calyrex Ice team. Um, Gigalith is similar, right? The idea of having a really slow Pokemon that can set up the sand and also sweep under the sand, uh, under Trick Room, sorry, is really valuable, honestly, especially because a lot of Pokemon right now are actually decently weak to T-Tar and Gigalith. So, yeah, I really like the Life Orb Gigalith set here. They're going to go with Landorus and Zekrom. Okay, you know, I don't mind that too much. Um, Lando's definitely a little bit scary here. But they didn't go with Trick Room, which honestly was what I was expecting here. I kind of want to max Airstream Dazzling Gleam turn one. Into the Lando. Maybe they just protect Lando, but the thing is, you, you have to definitely respect me doubling. Like, Zekrom is in an awkward spot here, too. So, yeah, honestly, I think I'm just going to go for the max Airstream and the Dazzling Gleam. The only fear here is if you're, like, weakness policy Zekrom. They could max Lightning to change the terrain, but once I get a speed boost, like, Landorus isn't attacking here if it doesn't protect, right? Even if it protects, they do get a speed boost. It's just like Zekrom could max Lightning and retaliate back. It's just, like... I don't know, I so easily could have gone Max Psychic and Moonblast into the Zekrom slot. Maybe I should have, actually, because, like, Lando's actually not that much of a threat, and Zekrom's the clear Dynamax option here. I don't know, I mean, I'm hoping to see, like, a Zekrom Protect right now, but... Could be Scarf Lando, too. Ugh, and they just Max Zekrom. Okay. That's a little bit frustrating, because I really felt like I could have just gone Max Psychic and... Psychic or Moonblast. Oh! <laughs> That's why. His Dynamax Lander is I. Whoa, 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 okay. Did, did Zekrom protect? Because I feel like that would make the most sense. Okay, they didn't protect the Zekrom. Um, I mean, I honestly feel like this is okay. I don't think you can pick up a double KO in this position. As long as you don't pick up a double KO, I actually think we're in decent shape. It's great damage from Dazzling. Okay, yeah, they're not weakness policy. They just go for their own airstream. I'm fine with that. Ooh. That almost KOs. Was that physical then? I'm not sure. Either way, obviously, surviving there is great. It's Life Orb, yeah. And they're going to Fusion Bolt here into the... Looks like Lele. Hmm. Okay, well, now this is frustrating because I... Entei would have been a lot better for me to have here. If I had Entei, I actually feel like we just kind of win the game right now. Um... I think it's fine to go into Grim Snarl though. What is with my controller? Oh, it is drifting. Um, yeah, we can set up screens right now. Is that physical Landorus Eye? The damage output made it kind of look like it was. I mean, I'm down to reflect with Grim Snarl right now. Because Gigalith is actually really good against my opponent's team in the end game as well, right? We still have speed with Mewtwo, so I don't think I need to airstream here. I'm just going to Mindstorm it and reflect. Maybe Land... I think Lander's protecting here is pretty obvious. Oh, okay. Oh, this could be interesting if you end up protecting the, the Landorus. If you don't protect, though, I can just self-sucker punch into Max Psychic into Porygon next turn, which is fantastic for us. Ah, uh, they did Max Guard. Ugh, okay. I think I go for the KO onto Porygon right now, though. Um, yeah, I definitely didn't expect Dynamax Landorus Eye in this game. That's really cool. But I think I'll just go Mindstorm into Porygon and Sucker Punch into Mewtwo right now. I guess Landorus can just go for an Airstream. Which is definitely scary, but I, I kind of... Actually, why am I targeting Porygon so aggressively when I have Gigalith in the back? Probably didn't need to. Hmm. This KOs, right? Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe it's better to just KO the Landorus there. Okay, but they go for Quake, which is nice, because that means you are not going for... And they target Grimstar. Okay, nice. Beautiful. 
Well, that's actually perfect for us because we can just expanding force spam now. But I, I, I don't know. I think it may have been worthwhile to actually just try to KO Landorus in that position because if they airstream, they would outspeed us this next turn. But now they have no psychic resist into a Mewtwo with plus two under terrain and policy. So things are looking really good right now. Uh, Milotic is their last one. So they have Milotic Zekrom. We have Reflect Up. They're at plus one special defense on Landris. They're Life Orb. We can Light Screen this next turn. My only fear now is probably... What's my fear? I, I could also just Protect with Mewtwo, but we do have Expanding Force in Terrain. And Terrain is expiring soon, so... I think I just like Light Screen here. I guess my only fear is Hypnosis on the Milotic. Oh, they actually just end up forfeiting. Okay, I guess they realized they had no Mewtwo answers at this point. Because <laughs> they, like, once again, this is like the disadvantage sometimes you, uh, teams can have. If you don't have a single resistance uh, or immunity to a certain type, uh, you can just roll through it, right? So in that game, like, my opponent didn't have any psychic type, or sorry, psychic resistor immunities. Um, and, like, the games we've lost with this team are up against teams that have, like, a really good uh, Mewtwo answers, right? So, well, the, the two losses we had were to uh, the Evil Tull, um, team in the first game today, and then the Calyrex Ghost. They didn't even have, they didn't even max Calyrex Ghost in that game, though. Uh, it was a game three of the last episode. Ooh, rank 11. Okay. Well, I ended up playing a fourth game today, and we go up against a really high-ranked opponent, so that's cool. Uh, okay, so I have to worry about Brutal Swing Tornadoes and some Metagross here. Shoot, that's actually really bad. I feel like Metagross kind of clowns on me here. I have T-Wave on this thing. That's actually kind of interesting. Yeah, I could T-Wave Metagross. I don't really care about your Tailwind, and then Mewtwo can outspeed. This does not look like a good matchup, I have to admit. Um, Because they have Tailwind... And just as I was talking about resistances and immunities, I don't have a single water type resistance. Now I do have wide guard on Gigalit, so there is an argument to bringing this thing just for wide guard. Hmm. That'd be really interesting. But then who do I drop? Maybe it's Lele then. But then you can just sucker punch into Mewtwo. Blech. We could actually max Lele, actually, now that I think about it. Depending on how... I expect Tornadus Metagross here. Um, Tor Metagross feels really consistent. Um, I really like Metagross on the Tornadus comps because... I mean, you, you'll, you'll see, like, a Steel-type typically, right? Cartana is the most common one, but Metagross is cool because you can just easily have a Weakness Policy on it, Brutal Swing on the Tornadus, and then boom, now you have Metagross and Kyogre really threatening. But they go with Torn and Ogre. Okay. Um, How do we feel about this? I can protect Light Screen turn 1 into Thunder Wave Max Psychic turn 2. Yeah, I mean, I want a Light Screen and protect here, I think. Light Screen early is definitely valuable, but I don't know if it. Like, maybe. I think Grimstorm might still faint from the Water Spout. Oh, they switch out. Okay. I don't mind that at all, then. They go into Metagross. So they might just be going for Brutal Swing here immediately, but that was a good play because you can see what my opponent was going for, right? The, the classic, like, let me switch in to bait and attack out. So Tailwind here, it's fine. I'm not really that worried about that, but I think Brutal Swing's definitely coming our way this next turn. And the light screen ends up being completely useless. So I have, I have Thunder Wave and Reflect. I, I think I have to Thunder Wave in this position, actually. So T-Wave into the Metagross and switch Mewtwo out into a Lucky. Yeah. Oh, Metagross is just really tough here because I don't have the Sun up. But then leading Kyogre was really smart because they just instantly activated the rain. So I love the like Tornadus Kyogre lead where they don't play offensively with the Kyogre immediately. I think that was really smart. Um, yeah, I mean, that was just a really smart play. I mean, here, if you're my opponent, I think it's just... Brutal Swing... Uh, Brutal Swing Quake would be the play, I think, into me too, but... That's a shame, because if I had Phantasm here, I could actually still just easily KO Metagross, but... 
the thing with Thunder Wave too is that we have multiple para chances right in their turns of Dynamax, so a single one could definitely turn the uh, swing of the battle back into our favor immediately. But I have to stall out Metagrossus Max and stall out their Tailwind, which is what's tough here. Ooh, but they get fully paralyzed. Okay, nice. That's really, really big for us. Um. Okay, well, I'm definitely going to reflect here. <laughs> I could Sucker Punch Assurance Metagross, but no, that's obviously a meme. <laughs> if only Lucky had any semblance of an attack stat. Um, okay, what we want to do here is make sure they don't get another Tailwind up. Actually, Reflect doesn't even... Well, it, it sets up... It helps us later on. Because, like, you might Steel Spike here into Grimmsnarl, right? Alternatively, I actually really just want to KO Tornadus right now. Okay, good. They don't protect your Switch. That's actually really, really good. Yeah, they go for Hurricane. That's fine. Okay. Wakamberry. Is that enough to survive after the chip damage that we did? I think it might be. Okay, we're good. Never mind. Sorry, I keep doubting you, Regieleki. Uh, that was definitely a very fortunate full paralysis, but that's why Priority Thunder Wave can be really good. Uh, they attack through this time, but that's deserved. <laughs> and they go into Aleki. Okay. You know, the thing that's interesting is that Sucker Punch actually does a sizable amount of damage into Metagross. Um, and the reality is, if you're paralyzed right from your first turn of Dynamax, like, the odds of getting a single para over three turns of Dynamax are actually decent. I really just wanted to knock out Tornadus because I really don't want my opponent to get another Tailwind up in this game, right? The thing is, I can bring in Mewtwo, I can self-Sucker Punch, but what does that even get me? Ooh, it's Urshifu. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's a problem. Because you can just Wicked Blow. And I can't even Thunder Wave into your Urshifu. Uh, I should have thought about that coming out more. Hmm. If you're my opponent, what do you do? Double up onto Mewtwo? That actually is pretty possible. So what I could do here is... Hmm. I could switch into Lele. And Max Guard. And then Airstream Urshifu Dazzle next turn. I actually think that's the play. I, you could so easily just Wicked Blow me too and Steel Spike into Grimmsnarl here though, right? And I think that's actually a very acceptable play as well, so... Yeah, I think that's just the main uh, downside on Mewtwo. Against Pokemon, against teams that don't have great resistance to, resistance to it, it can really sweep through. But against teams that have good resistance to it... And that resistance is to it, like uh, the Metagross here, it definitely struggles a little bit more. Uh, but my opponent also played the Metagross really well, right? Like, they they brought out Kyogre for the early rain, so that my Fire-type attacks against Metagross wouldn't do as much damage. But I'm hoping here Mewtwo is diverting all the pressure, and if they actually double up onto Mewtwo, I think we can definitely still very easily win this with the late-game Mewtwo. I would just think you'd want a Wicked Blow here into the Mewtwo slot. Yep, okay, so that's good. Show me a Metagross attack into that slot, too. Yikes. <laughs> they didn't. I guess they didn't really feel the need to, because they probably were like, oh, I'm just going to KO anyway, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, I think, unfortunately, now that will be game over. Because the funny thing here is I actually could have just gone for a Max Flare onto Metagross, and that position sacrificed the Grimmsnarl. You would activate my policy, and then we could actually totally win. Unless Wicked Blow actually just KOs even when Dynamaxed. Which, which maybe is the case. I don't think it does, but... I can't Sucker Punch here with Terrain being up, so I think my opponent should win the game. At this point, we're hoping for a lot of Paras on Metagross. Uh, I never reflected, so I guess I can reflect here. Maybe they're not Focus Sash, but I think it's gotta be, because your... your um, Tornadus wasn't Sashed. I guess they have a Leki, so... I mean, maybe it's Banded. That would actually be really interesting, because that would explain why they didn't double up onto Mewtwo, so I can Airstream here. If they're banded, like, we actually have a chance here. Um, but based off how... It's, it's just a shame I don't I don't have, like, um, any other attack on Grimstorm. Because I could have gone, like, Airstream Spirit Break here too, right? If I had Spirit Break. So, we'll get Airstream off. Yeah, they're sashed. So that's actually a little frustrating. Because I could have just got... I think if I went for Flare last turn onto Metagross, we actually would have won the game. 
Because then what happens? Well, let's see how much Wicked Blow does. Yeah, that wasn't enough for a KO because they would have activated my weakness policy and then I could have flared or airstreamed into the Urshifu. And if I stayed in with Grim Snarl, I bring in Lele. So I, I think it was reasonable to think a double up onto Mewtwo there was going to happen, but they just played better and didn't go for it. Yeah. Uh, how else? I mean, so here's the tricky, like, I can't bring Gigalith into this matchup, really, with Urshifu, Metagross, Kyogre, and Rillaboom. Um, like, I don't feel like I played that poorly, but I just feel like I was kind of limited in my options, because a, a setup Metagross is just so strong, right? Entei doesn't feel that good, either, into a Kyogre in general, but I suppose it had Snarl. Mmm... I think the only turn I can really think of us playing drastically differently was the turn where I read into the double up onto Mewtwo. And I don't really re regret making that read, to be honest. I think it's like a fair assumption to make. But I think at this point, we can still hope for Paras on Metagross. So that's our win con. If they get, you know, let's say three Paras, we one shot Kyogre with Max Psychic. We need, we need two Paras actually. No, actually we need three, because I'm not KOing Metagross even with a Flare anyway. And they end up attacking through, yeah. So, okay, let's play it out. Let's say I just attacked with Mewtwo that turn. What, what, what would I have done? I would have sacrificed Grimmsnarl, and I would have attacked with Mewtwo. Uh, Metagross was still Dynamax that turn. So... I think I would have just Airstreamed into Urshifu. I airstream into Urshifu, I'm at 110 HP, and then I bring in Lele, and then it's plus two Metagross, or sorry, plus two Mewtwo. And then I think what I do is just Flare into Metagross and Dazzling Gleam. So then the question is whether or not Max Flare plus Dazzle can KO Metagross, because the rain was up and they had plus one special defense boost. Oh, but then I guess, no, 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 I still need the speed boost onto Lele, don't I? No, so the play would have been to Flare Metagross. Yeah, we flare Metagross, and then we go for Airstream Dazzle. Uh, never mind, I still don't think we do enough damage into Metagross. Metagross is just too tanky, and we don't have reliable damage into it. Like, the, the, the method I was trying to set myself up for was basically Mewtwo plus two Max Flare into Metagross, but with them leading Tornadus Kyogre instead of Tornadus Metagross, uh, it made that setup impossible, basically. And as soon as they did that, and the turn one switch was really, really well executed on them, uh, on their end, it was just really difficult to really do anything. Um... And that's just, you know, a, a testament to one, a well-built team on my opponent's end, but also a great transition just on that first turn. So, yeah. The losses we had today, I don't really mind. Like, I feel like our opponents played really well, and it definitely was a somewhat tough matchup for Mewtwo. Like, don't get me wrong, Mewtwo's really fun. I had a blast with this team, but it's not going to win you every single game. Uh, if you want more consistent restricted Pokemon, right, you obviously have things like Zacian, Kyogre, Groudon, uh, just to name a couple uh calyrex as well both of the calyrex forms um so the thing about mewtwo is that it's a little bit more volatile a little bit more variable uh and in the end yeah like it will struggle significantly against pokemon that can resist its attacks especially if like you don't get that weakness policy activated and weakness policy setups are great but you can't always guarantee it um so yeah i think like that's the reality of mewtwo and that's why you don't see it very much on the ladder but i think this is definitely one of the most well-constructed mewtwo teams i've seen in general uh and you know we use a lot of the different components we featured the entei we featured the gigalith i'm sad we never got the self-assurance from aleki onto uh, the mewtwo that would have been kind of fun but overall glad to really feature this team and we played some really great opponents and uh yeah like those losses i don't mind at all i thought our opponents played really really well uh and I have to go back to the drawing board and think about like how we could have mapped it out a little bit better because I didn't feel like I played like significantly poor, poorer, um, but they took what was I think thought like a decent matchup and then like really ran away with it. Actually, I don't think the first game was even that good of a matchup for my opponent. They just baited me into Dynamaxing really, really well. Um, whereas this last matchup against Weakness Policy Metagross with Tailwind and Kyogre and Urshifu feels a little bit tougher. So yeah. Um, but as I always say, as I always say, like you could have the best matchup in Pokemon, but you still have to actually execute it correctly, right? And that's exactly what my last opponent did. Like I think they basically played that game perfectly, um, and we were even lucky to you know be in it with that full para uh, to start. But it's just such a good switch on turn one. So yeah. Either way, that's gonna be it for this one. Thank you so much as always for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time. All right, peace.